1 Corinthians chapter 10 from the Living Bible Version. And you can find more readings at www.wordofgodonline. Here we go with chapter 10. For we must never forget, dear brothers, what happened to our people in the wilderness long ago. God guided them by sending a cloud that moved along ahead of them, and he brought them all safely through the waters of the Red Sea. This might be called their baptism, baptized both in sea and cloud, as followers of Moses, their commitment to him as their leader. And by a miracle, God sent them food to eat and water to drink there in the desert. They drank the water that Christ gave them. He was there with them as a mighty rock of spiritual refreshment. Yet after all this, most of them did not obey God, and he destroyed them in the wilderness. From this lesson we are warned that we must not desire evil things as they did, nor worship idols as they did. The scripture tells us the people sat down to eat and drink, and then got up to dance in worship of the golden calf. Another lesson for us is what happened when some of them sinned and other men's wives with other men's wives, and twenty three thousand fell dead in one day. And don't try the Lord's patience. They did and died from snake bites. And don't murmur against God and his dealings with you, as some of them did, for that is why God sent his angel to destroy them. All these things happened to them as examples, as object lessons to us, to warn us against doing the same things. They were written down so that we could read about them and learn from them in these last days, as the world nears its end. So be careful. If you're thinking, Oh, I would never behave like that. Let this be a warning to you. For you too may fall into sin. But remember this. The wrong desires that come into your life aren't anything new and different. Many others have faced exactly the same problems before you. And no temptation is irresistible. You can trust God to keep the temptation from becoming so strong that you can't stand up against it. For he has promised this and will do what he says. He will show you how to escape temptation's power so that you can bear up patiently against it. So dear friends, carefully avoid idol worship of every kind. You are intelligent people. Look now and see for yourselves whether what I am about to say is true. When we ask the Lord's blessings upon our drinking from the cup of wine at the Lord's table, this means, doesn't it, that all who drink in, who drink it, are sharing together the blessings of Christ's blood? And when we break off pieces of the bread from the loaf to eat there together, this shows that we are sharing together in the benefits of his body. No matter how many of us are, there are, we all eat from the same loaf, showing that we are all parts of the one body of Christ. And the Jewish people, all who eat sacrifices, are united by that act. What am I trying to say? Am I, trying, am I saying that the idols to whom that the heathen bring sacrifices are really alive and are real gods, and that these sacrifices are of some value? No, not at all. What I am saying is that those who offer food to these idols are united together in sacrificing to demons, certainly not to God. And I don't want any of you to partner with demons when you eat the same food, along with the heathen, that has been offered to these idols. You cannot drink from, that, from the cup at the Lord's table and at Satan's table too. You cannot eat bread both at the Lord's table and at Satan's table. What? Are you tempting the Lord to be angry with you? Are you stronger than he is? You are certainly free to eat food offered to idols if you want to. It's not against God's law to eat such meat, but that doesn't mean that you should go ahead and do it. It may be perfectly legal, but it may not be best and helpful. Don't think only of yourself. Try to think of the other fellow, too, and what is best for him. Here is what you should do. Take any meat you want that is sold in the, at the market. Don't ask whether or not it was offered to idols lest the answer hurts your conscience. For the earth and every good thing in it belongs to the Lord and is yours to enjoy. 
If someone who isn't a Christian asks you out to dinner, go ahead. Accept the invitation if you want to. Eat whatever is on the table and don't ask questions about it. Then you won't know whether or not it has been used as a sacrifice to idols, and you won't risk having a bad conscience over eating it. But if someone warns you that this meat has been offered to idols, then don't eat it for the sake of the man who told you, and his conscience. In this case, his feelings about it is the important thing, not yours. But why, you may ask, may I be guided and limited by what someone else thinks? If I can thank God for the food and enjoy it, why let someone spoil everything just because he thinks I am wrong? Well, I'll tell you why. It is because you must do everything for the glory of God, even your eating and drinking. So don't be stumbling. So don't be a stumbling block to anyone, whether they are Jews or Gentiles or Christians. That is the plan I follow too. I try to please everyone in everything I do, not doing what I like or what is best for me, but what is best for them, so that they may be saved. First Corinthians chapter ten from the Living Bible Online.